pitch is controlled by the elevators, elevator control tabs, and a horizontal stabilizer. The control columns provide elevator inputs for pitch control. The control columns are connected together without provision for separation. Two elevator power units are mechanically connected to the control columns. Each elevator power unit operates a separate and independent elevator. The elevator power units are powered by hydraulic systems A and B. Hydraulic power to the elevator power units is controlled by the elevator system A and B switches. When the switches are in the guarded on positions, hydraulic power is available. A control tab is located on each elevator and functions as a balance tab when hydraulic power is available. The elevator feel system allows large elevator inputs at low speed and restrains elevator inputs at high speed by changing the resistance to control column movement. The elevator feel and centering mechanism provides control column resistance. This mechanism is hydraulically operated by the elevator feel computer. The elevator feel computer consists of two sections, labeled A and B. Both sections receive inputs of hydraulic pressure, horizontal stabilizer position, and airspeed. An elevator position indicator displays left and right elevator position. Each elevator power unit is mechanically connected to its respective autopilot elevator servo. The A autopilot servo receives hydraulic pressure from system A, and the B autopilot servo receives hydraulic pressure from system B. Pitch trim is accomplished through a stabilizer trim unit, which varies the position of the horizontal stabilizer. The stabilizer trim unit can be operated by a high-speed main electric trim motor, a low-speed autopilot cruise trim motor, and a manual stabilizer trim wheel. A transfer relay prevents simultaneous operation of the main electric and autopilot cruise trim motors. The arming of the main electric and autopilot cruise trim motors is controlled by the stabilizer trim cutout switches. With the switches in the normal positions, the stabilizer trim system is armed. Two part main electric stabilizer trim switches operate the main electric trim motor and a disconnect clutch, moving both switches positions the stabilizer nose up or nose down. Operating either switch individually causes no action. The captain's and first officer's trim switches should not be operated simultaneously in opposite directions. The stabilizer cruise trim switch operates the autopilot cruise trim motor. Moving the switch forward or aft repositions the stabilizer. The stab trim light illuminates any time a trim switch is activated. The stab trim light does not illuminate during autopilot trimming. The stabilizer trim wheels allow manual movement of the stabilizer through retractable handles. The trim wheels also provide a positive indication of stabilizer movement. A stab trim position indicator displays stabilizer position in units. The green band identifies the takeoff range. Four external marks on the vertical stabilizer correspond to maximum nose up and down indications, a zero unit setting, and a five unit nose up setting. Now let's look at the pitch control abnormals. 
Should hydraulic system A and B output pressure from the elevator field computer differ greater than 25%, the elevator differential pressure light illuminates. When low pressure is sensed between the shutoff valve and the elevator power unit, the respective elevator system light illuminates. Should a loss of A and B hydraulic systems occur, both elevator system lights illuminate and elevator control reverts to manual reversion. The control columns are now mechanically linked to the control tabs, which aerodynamically fly the elevators to the desired position. Elevator feel is now accomplished by a manual reversion spring in the feel and centering mechanism and air loads on the elevators. Should a runaway stabilizer condition occur, placing the stabilizer trim cutout switches to the cutout position removes electrical power to the trim system. Trim motors can be overridden through the disconnect clutch by physically restraining the stabilizer trim wheels. The stabilizer brake may also be used to stop a runaway stabilizer condition. The stabilizer brake is engaged by moving the control column opposite trim direction. The stabilizer brake release pull handle releases the stabilizer brake when the handle is pulled. The brake can also be released by relaxing pressure on the control column. A jammed stabilizer is indicated when the stabilizer trim wheels will not move electrically or mechanically. Pulling the stabilizer brake release may restore stabilizer trim.